What's going on guys? Hearing with Hardy Tech and today we're going to be hatching the eggs in a leaf green. And I've been debating how to do this for the past few days and one of the reasons I've kind of been procrastinating it is because I had no idea how in the world I was supposed to sound interesting for like 20 to 25 minutes while all I'm doing is hatching eggs and be like, oh it's a Growlithe. Awkward silence. Oh it's a Lapras. So I decided that I'm just going to pre-record them and then um, we'll do some more story time because we haven't done any of those in a while and I thought this would be a good way um, to pass the time. Now if you're curious your egg got hatched, I did take like a few seconds to look at the moveset of each Pokemon like before I put them back in the box. So if it goes a little fast just pause it if you possibly think you see your Pokemon. And if you're curious I made an entire list of every Pokemon that was hatched and I put it. I will put it in a description. It is in alphabetical order from um, most hatched to least hatched, and to not really a big surprise, Bulbasaur was the most hatched Pokemon. But I think that's more because a lot of people making mistakes. And the two second most Pokemon hatched Pokemon tied is Lapras and Growlithe. So you can see the entire list down below. Now let's get started with some stories. Now before I start, I just want to tell you all this is 100% true. It was the year 2007, another typical day in middle school where kids would play and goof off like me. I had a friend who always likes to poke my stomach, and sides at random points of the day, so one day I decided to do the same thing. I ran after her trying to poke her back, which I managed to do, but I didn't poke her stomach at all. She was, cry she was trying to wander her way from me climbing up her school's main staircase, and I accidentally poked her butt. Yeah, accidentally. Which, for some reason, led to her moaning. <laughs> wow, dude, you got magic hands. And with all that amazing luck I've been having that day, one of my old teachers, who literally hated my guts, saw what happened and thought I was trying to violate her. So she took the chance and so she took the chance and took me and my friends straight to the office. As soon as we got there, another one of my friends came out of the bathroom, which was close to the office, and said hi to me. My teacher then took her and dragged her into the office with the rest of us. She barged right into the principal's office and said that I was inappropriately touching these girls and they didn't want me to molest them. <laughs> I'm a little curious, how in the world were you inappropriately touching a girl that came out of the bathroom? I'm, I'm not even going to question that. As soon as she was done lying her butt off to the principal, he called my mother who rushed over to school just so she could scream at the errors I made. A cop then walked in to tell me that he was going to talk to my friends, and if they said I did touch them inappropriately, I would be sent to juvie marked as a sexual harasser. My mom started crying and screaming at me while I couldn't say a word or it would be used against me. When the two girls came out, the cop and principal said I was free to go and that I was a huge misunderstanding. That's how Nitto Khan almost became a sexual harasser. If I'm not mistaken, Nitto Khan is actually the guy who role-played as Moon in the comments during my Leaf Green Egg Lock, so Moon is a harasser. And don't worry about me saying his name in the message he said that I'm welcome to say his name if I want to, so I just didn't like out him for no reason. I'm not that big of an asshole. <laughs> Sorry. The epilogue is the teacher got fired with the dream of getting her revenge for getting her fired. Wait, the teacher got fired with the dream of getting her revenge for getting her fired? That's a weird epilogue. Epilogue. Epic thing. Um, anyways, let's go on to something a little more weird. Hi, Hardy. This is a quaint little story about my college life. I go to university and participate in a few different clubs. One of these is a tiny little group called Dojin Club. We are a group of people who are trying, emphasis on trying, to make our own manga story just for fun. Though usually the meetings start with maybe an hour of actual progress and end with an hour of YouTube videos. I hope you're watching mine. Actual progress in... I, I already read that part. <laughs> I lost my place. Anyways, one day, towards the end of the last semester, we were having our weekly meeting. And all, and all was going well. Suddenly, some random guy knocks on the door and asks us if we were at a doujin club. We told him we were and that he was... And we were just discussing progression of the plot. He told us that he was interested to join, so we happily welcome him. Before we could get back to the story we had been working on, he tells us that he has an idea for a story that he really wanted to pitch to us. We knew that we were just going to end up sticking with what we had been working on for two semesters, but we, were humored, but we humored him and listened to his idea. His idea was started with the group of superheroes similar, he said, to the Justice League. Already, this was a bit different than the kind of stuff we do, but we continued to listen. 
He wanted a group of superheroes that were all women and had special powers. Each of them would have a theme, he said, such as bondage, S&M, dildos, that kind of thing. Each of them would use their special theme to fight crime. Oh god, it's dildo girl. Confused, our leader said, so like, they would use things like tentacle rape to stop bad guys? And he said, yeah, that could be one of them. Everyone is just sitting there completely shocked at what this kid is saying. I'm trying my hardest not to laugh, laugh obviously to our disapproval. He then goes on to tell us that he has had this idea for a long time and is actually trying to get some of his friends to help him make a live action movie of this. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go well. Though, of course, that wasn't working out too well. <laughs> Naturally, we refused this idea, calmly and nicely, while trying to explain to him that even though we are in college, this is still a school club and that story would get just a little bit inappropriate. Not to mention he pitches this idea to a group consisting mostly of women. After shamelessly requesting that we draw his kinky fantasies, he decides to stay and try to help us on our current story. After about five minutes, one of his friends barges into the room and strikes up a conversation with him about D&D. The two of them stand in our doorway for at least 15 minutes having, having a loud conversation while we try to continue our meeting. Just as I had enough and we were going to ask him to leave, the two of them just walk out and retreat back to the gaming club room down the hall. Some people. So basically the moral of this story is that superheroes should not use dildos. If any of you are writing a comic about that, I hate to burst your bubble. Okay, and our final story to end the entire Leaf Green series is from a girl. I assume this is a girl, otherwise it's a very awkward boy. Hi, Hardy, I'm a big fan. Here's a story maybe for your next grinding montage. Well, hatching montage, but it's all the same. Okay, so back in 8th grade, I believe, I was in the girls' locker room getting changed and stuff when all of a sudden I look up and see all the other girls staring at me. I ask, what are you, I ask, what are you looking at? And girls say, OMG, not to sound weird, but you have really nice boobs. I think I know where this is going. And I just stare back, my face bright red, wondering, WTF, why are they telling me this, yo? So they ask me questions regarding my chest. And I don't answer any, I just continue to get dressed when all of a sudden, a shirt falls from the ceiling right in front of me. All the girls look up and see one of our male classmates climbing the rafters or something staring at us. And he says, Hey, what's up, man? All of the girls start shrieking and I just finish changing because no shits are given that day. And I walk out with a face flushed red of embarrassment. One of my friends who has already done changing who missed the commotion asked me what's wrong. And I just said, I... I don't really know myself. And that's my story. Love you, Hardy. Stay awesome. Well, thank you for apparently having amazing boobs and perverted classmates. Congratulations. <laughs> I that, that was probably rude. Um, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this hatching and the end of Leaf Green. Thank you, everybody. This has been, like, my most successful Nuzlocke run. Not really actually, like, winning-wise, but, like, with the amount of attention it got and everything, it was really awesome. And... Hopefully the next one, even though it won't be an egg lock, can continue off of this amazing, um, whatever this is, and, yeah, Pokemon, go away now, bye.